Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about links. So suppose you have just accidentally clicked on a link to dangerous.pwn, and you are concerned about whether you're going to get pwned or not. What I want to talk about in this video is whether it is possible and whether it is likely to get hacked just by clicking a link. When we say just by clicking a link, I mean you click a link, and pretty much, let's say, a few minutes later, you don't put any information in and you do not download anything. Is there a risk? And the basic answer is sort of, but not in the way you're thinking. So the good news is, officially, browsers haven't allowed code execution, like Albatry, on your computer code execution since ActiveX controls were a thing, which has been mostly phased out around 10 years ago. So that's not a main concern. But that doesn't mean there isn't a fair amount of information that can be acquired. So I'm going to show you a service. This is called Grabify. So we'll put my YouTube channel in here. We'll create a URL. Let me agree to the terms of service. Nowadays, because of GDPR, you usually have to legally get consent before using a Grabify link. But I don't mind. So here we go. Now, what does Smart Logger do? I think it gets us. So it gets us more information. So that's very much desirable. Now, I am using a VPN, and that's one way you can mitigate some of these risks. I'm, of course, using private internet access, but you can use different VPNs. This is not a sponsored video. So, we'll get our Grabify link, and then we'll see what information is collected. And we get a, a, a fake Cloudflare notification, and then we do end up on my YouTube channel. So, you might not even realize anything's happened. Because you can also customize these links, so you can make it, like... We choose one that seems more reasonable, and we can also put the right name so that it doesn't sound like an IP grabber. Now let's refresh the tracking page. So, I think this is actually... Okay, so smart enough to know that this is actually a VPN. So, we're not going to waste any time on that, but we can still collect a fair amount of information. What browser are we using? Microsoft Edge. Uh, this is actually Windows 11, but there's no user agent for that. User agent, referrer, none, ISB, uh, just that's protected by the VPN. And if you're on mobile, they can actually get quite a bit more information like your battery level. And in theory, this could be used to fingerprint you. Now here, I, I think this is a VPN ad, probably. No, they're going to say. But that's not a total fix. So what I'm going to show you next is Mulvad browser. Now, of course, Mulvad is famous for their infamous, in a good way, VPN that has very, it's the most privacy-focused VPN. But that's not what we're talking about today. This is Mulvad browser. It's completely free, and you use it with any VPN you like. And what it, it seeks to block fingerprinting. This is basically Tor browser without Tor. Now, the idea here is that Mulvad browser will send as little information to websites as it possibly can. Now, one of the ways it does that is, look, this is a weird-sized window, and that is annoying for general use. But for maximum privacy and security, this does give you more punch. See how there's a box here? That is because one of the ways you can track people, browser fingerprinting, requires a like, screen resolution can be a thing. Especially uh, with laptops, which can sometimes have fairly unique screen resolutions. So here's our second hit from Mulvad View. Now we get Firefox, and we don't get a lot out. Now here we're going to look at a site that takes this to the next level. Am I unique? So let's see our fingerprint. And this is going to go through absolutely everything. And this is where using a browser that is designed to prevent this could yield an advantage. So 0 0.40. That's because probably this is only going to show up for Mulvad users. And then we got this, which is 28%, probably Firefox users. And these are all pretty common. And of course, our referrer is one potential fingerprint. Ooh, so they're still getting a unique hit. Probably as well because this is a VMware GPU, and VMware is going to render the canvas differently. So that's a factor. So then... What about actually executing code from a single link click? Well, there are really two things you have to worry about. The first one is the scary one that is almost never going to happen to you unless you're targeted by a state-sponsored actor. But I'll, I'll pull up the article so we can look at this. So what has happened 
and this happened has happened a few times, is North Koreans have exploited a zero-day exploit in Chrome to gain remote code execution. What this essentially means is that a website, because especially with JavaScript, which uses a JIT, which means the JavaScript is actually compiled to native machine code, well, if you're able to escape the sandbox, you can now inject arbitrary code into Chrome.exe. Now, how screwed you are at this point actually hugely depends on the operating system. Windows actually has some really good anti-exploit features to give low integrity to web browsers. In addition, Windows previously had a special virtualization-based security function for Microsoft Edge that put Microsoft Edge in an entirely separate virtual machine. I don't know why they got rid of this, it was something that happened when they switched to a Chromium backend, but that made it even more secure. So Windows, pretty good integrity protection. Mac has absolutely amazing integrity protection. Now this is one of the cases where Linux actually ends up being less secure. If you're on Linux, unless you set up SE Linux or App Elmer and configure a profile, which I can pretty much guarantee most Linux users haven't done, uh, they have now gained execution as an ordinary user and can do anything that you can. That's a bit scary, but either way, at this point they have gained code execution. Now the good news is that these vulnerabilities are pretty uncommon, and unless you're a target of a state-sponsored actor, it's probably not going to be an issue. Some have targeted cryptocurrency users, and they build a fake LinkedIn, emails, WhatsApp, phone calls, and they take your money and they steal intelligence. They have also previously gone after security researchers with this for the sake of gaining exploits. Now, the more likely exploit is something called cross-site scripting. Now, cross-site scripting allows you to obtain information that you should not be able to. So as an example, I could potentially, if Google had some sort of cross-site scripting vulnerability, I could send you to a link, and through that I could extract your Google session without you ever having to give it to me. Similar exploits are, can also be used for things like clickjacking, where clicking on a website can lead to you, for example, subscribing to a YouTube channel that you didn't want to. Now the link, this is often going to be a reflected cross-site scripting attack. This is one that doesn't require any permanent data to be stored on the website, where you simply send a link, for example, google.com slash some weird string of characters that manages to inject HTML. This is also why, if you've ever tried to put these characters in a YouTube description, you are not able to. That is so that, in the event there was a catastrophic mistake on some YouTube client, it would not result in a cross-site scripting vulnerability. Of course, the yeah, you can steal cookies, you can you can potentially act as the user. If it's a financial site, you might be able to spend their money. It's a real problem. So then, what is the answer to the question? In most cases, the worst case scenario for clicking a link and not doing anything further is tracking. They can learn a lot about you, and they might be able to use that to then uh, compare against other browser fingerprints they collect and learn more about you. That, that's like the base level. Or if you're not using a VPN, maybe they're going to DDoS you. Then in a moderately bad scenario, they have found a cross-site scripting attack for a site you use. Now the good news is this can be avoided super easily. If you're on Chrome or Edge, all you got to do, incognito, and now anything you do on the cross-site scripting doesn't matter. That's done. So for tracking, VPN. For cross-site scripting, incognito or Tor browser would solve both of those problems. Now what about the third one? zero-day exploit in your web browser. Well, unfortunately, there's no brilliant solution to that one. Using a service such as the AnyRun link viewer that I recently showed off in a sponsored video, or a virtual machine to run your browser is one option that is advisable when dealing with untrusted sources. Another is simply using a hardened browser like the Mulvad browser or the Tor browser because they are going to have much more conservative JavaScript settings, or in the case of the Tor browser, they might even block it by default. On Firefox, you can get an extension, it's called NoScript, and it will block untrusted JavaScript 
So unless you specifically allow it on sites that require it, uh, you won't be getting any JavaScript and therefore there will be no JIT escape. Theoretically, the JIT escape is also possible with things like game emulators that use a JIT, but that hasn't been seen widely so far. So that is going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. Let me know in the comments if you want any more, any requests. That's all from me for now. Bye!